Okay. Well, thanks for all coming out today. Uh, welcome, members. Uh, Board President Jack Rungi will now conduct the business meeting. Thank you, Mike, and again, welcome to everybody that's here today and those that may be online. Uh, at this time, it's my pleasure to introduce the uh, Board of Directors at Midland Power. Uh, Mike Coleman is the Vice President. She said to go through these a little slower and wait until they popped up on screen. So, uh, Randy Christensen is Secretary from Scranton. Rick Thompson is a Treasurer from Laverne. Joel Scow is the Assistant Secretary Treasurer from Wesley. Jim Briel from Ames, Iowa. Charlie Gilbert from Iowa Falls. Bill Harleen from Madrid. Paul Heineman from Ogden. Tom Ingebrigtsen from Hubbard. Kim Rinker, Ogden. And Doug Roby from Ames. For those attending in person today, the agenda will be followed uh, that you received today and will be followed, followed as distributed. And we will be happy to address any questions from members at the end of the meeting. Uh, for those of you attending online, please type your questions into the chat box. And Kara told me that is off to the side and she will be monitoring um, the uh, chat box. And we will address those questions at the end of the meeting. Uh, you should have received, those attending today should have received a copy of the minutes from the 2020 annual meeting. Uh, when you registered, for those viewing via online, the annual report and minutes uh, can be found uh, at midlandpower.coop. Unless I hear any additions or corrections, the minutes shall stand approved as received. It's now my pleasure to introduce our attorney, uh, Chris Sackett. Uh, those uh, who may or may not know, uh, John Gherkin had been our attorney for 40 years. Uh, John decided to retire, uh, and uh, Chris and his firm have taken over legal representation for Midland. So with that, Chris, we'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Jack. By the way, those are really big shoes to fill. I imagine a lot of folks here in the room know John Gherkin, and, and I worked with John many years ago on some things and, and reconnected with him through this process, and what a what a gentleman, what a lawyer. So you guys have benefited from having you know 40 years of continuity with someone. I'll try not to mess that up in, in, in my time getting to work with you. So, uh, so just a little bit about the, the, you know, the procedure, uh, the process here. Uh, the ballots obviously were sent were sent by mail. Um, and most of them have been been received. All then that are, will be counted. That we the counting has taken place already for those that have been received uh, prior to the meeting. If there are any uh, at the meeting that we need to pick up, we'll get those. We'll update the count and then we'll announce the results later on. Uh, we'll be electing four directors today, one from each district, three-year terms, and the nominating committee for 2022. Uh, and I would like to uh, introduce. Or, or at least at least thank the nominating committee and today's teller. So the nominating committee that, that uh, helped you to get to where you are was Rich Larson, Tanner Lawton, Richard Snyder, Christopher Paulson, Donald Ute, Jamie Whitert, Brody Bertram, Charles Borman, Alan Maines, Royal Duncan, Larry Engelson, and Dwayne Kruckenberg. So they did some good work to get you where you are here today with the, the, the nominees that you, that you had to choose from. And then the tellers who have been uh, diligently counting votes today and figuring out what, you know, which are which are good and if there's any questions or any things. Uh, my uh, my colleague Ross Curnow is with me today. He's been helping with that process. And the tellers today are Richard Schneider, Tanner Lawton, Colleen Radabaugh, Carla Adrian, Christopher Paulson, Beth Wirtz, Brody Bertram, Larry, I'm gonna try this, Bakey, uh, Dwayne Kruckenberg, Dan Olson, Lee Robeson, Deb Robeson, Rich Larson, Abby Sprague, Melanie Best, and Brenda Colleen. So without them and, and all their fingers and toes, we wouldn't be able to get this all figured out. So, so thank you to them. And I think at this point, if we have any ballots that are in the room that people want to submit and be counted, we've got one right back there, we'll get that picked up. Anyone else who's got a ballot today to submit? The second round of counting should not be all that complicated. Now. 
we ought to, we ought to be able to get that right. We'll just do plus one. All right, and I think that concludes my portion of it right now. I think it's back to Jack Rundy. So thank you. Real quickly, Jack. What's that? Uh, really? Okay. Tellers, do we want to go back to our stations really quickly to certify voting results? Is that okay? Sure, that probably Apologies. does make sense to get them certified. Also, thank you to everyone that had any part in the process. Uh, they do work behind the scenes, but it is a necessary process uh, to make this event happen. I would now like to uh, share our financial report and introduce Treasurer Rick Thompson. Uh, we are uh, doing the, with doing it online, our reports were video prepared prior to this. So uh, uh, that nervousness is out of the way. So with that, we'll see what Rick has to say. Hi, I'm Rick Thompson, the Treasurer on Midland Power Cooperative Board of Directors. It's my pleasure to, to deliver the Treasury report at this year's annual meeting. Much of the information that I'll be covering can be found in the 2020 annual report available online or by hard copy. Rural Utility Services, our lender, requires that we have an outside independent CPA firm audit our books each year. ID Bailey was hired to audit our books and I am pleased to announce their opinion. The independent auditor's report states, in our opinion, the financial statements referred to above are present fairly in all material respects the financial position of Midland Power Cooperative as of December 31st, 2020 and the result of its operation and cash flows for the year that ended in conformity with the accounting principles generally accepted in the United States of America. 2020 operating revenue decreased to 48,076,274. Midland Power's largest expense of purchase power was 33,304,856. After expenses, the 2020 operating margins were 1,764,000. 190. Total margins and dividends decreased from 2019. The decrease to 5,100,200 or the decrease of 215,940 is a result of the decrease in operating revenues. There were two causes of decrease in kilowatt hour sales in 2020. In April, sales were down 7.8% due to electric consumer behavior changes caused by COVID-19. The other reason for decreased sales during the year was due to the overall weather of 2020 being milder than 2019, which meant heating and cooling days were down 8% in 2020 from 2019. We have different classifications for our member accounts, which include residential, commercial, industrial, and resale, and public streets and highway lighting and authorities. For 2020 operating revenues were 48,076,274. And these classifications represent the source of this revenue, 52% residential, 31% industrial, 13% commercial, 5% resale, and less than 1% from other revenue classes. Operating expenses totaled 46.3 million. For every dollar of expenses, Power represents 72 cents, depreciation 8 cents, interest 4 cents, all other, such as administration, line operations, and maintenance, represent 16 cents. Total assets were 136,118,591. This includes net utility plant, which includes our fleet vehicles, trucks and power equipment, office and outpost buildings, as well as our distribution system, which includes 28 substations and about 4,000 miles of power line that covers 17 counties, as well as other non-essential assets, which are made up of our patronage capital issued from cooperatives we do business with, including lenders like CFC and CoBank, material distributors like Resco and Federated. Our total equity was more than $67 million. The long-term debt, less current maturities, 
principal and interest payable in the next year, included in our current liabilities, was $60,028,389. Our blended interest rate is at 3.16%. Current liabilities, as you can see by looking in your annual report, include current debt, accounts payable, mostly power costs, deposits, taxes, and other current and accrued liabilities. Deferred credits include prepayments from members for new services. The co-op's total equity and liabilities was $136,118,591. Equity represents the present and total assets that the membership actually own. Midland ended 2020 with equity of 49.5%, which is steady from 2019. This concludes the treasurer's report. Thank you. Financial information regarding the cooperative for 2020 is set out in the annual report, which was provided for you today. Are there any questions on the financial report? Thank you. Thank you, Rick. The annual report will stand as uh, stand approved as presented unless there are objections. Now my pleasure to uh, introduce the CEO report from CEO Bill McKim. That will be followed by my president's report. Good afternoon, I'm Bill McKim, CEO of Bill the Power. And I would like to join Jack and welcome you to Bill the Power's 2021 annual meeting. As members, this is your cooperative and thank you for making the commitment to attend. If you, this is your first time attending the annual meeting, we hope you are encouraged by what you learn. You know, at best, the cooperative does not differentiate between itself and its members. They're actually one and the same. I hope that after attending this annual meeting, you will agree. Unprecedented, disruptive, challenging. The backdrop of 2020 included a pandemic, a derecho, in an ice storm, yet we power through because of Midland Power Cooperative, we never stop in pursuit of giving you the power to better your lives. Never stop meant adapting as your Midland Power team stayed on the job throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. To accommodate safety measures such as social distancing, our team navigated the challenges of working together while actually being apart. At Midland Power Cooperative, we are committed to providing safe, reliable, and affordable and sustainable power to you. I really want to thank the staff and directors for the commitment to serving our members with excellence during the challenges of 2020. And thank you to our members for your patience and grace as we adapted to during these unprecedented circumstances. Recognizing some of the economic hardships some of our members were facing due to the pandemic Build the Power Cooperative Board of Directors approved paying out the 2020 patronage retirement of $1 million in the spring of 2020 instead of the fall when we traditionally paid out. To further support the membership, the $1 million patronage retirement of 2020 consisted primarily of dividends from 2019 business activities. This meant more current members received larger amounts of patronage retirements than in a typical year and they received their funds in June instead of November. Having a locally elected board that is responsive to the needs of membership is one of the many benefits of being a member of a locally owned and operated electric cooperative. We know that your overall member satisfaction is directly related to the reliability of the services we provide. Reliability is one of our top priorities in building power cooperative. In 2020, your cooperative invested over $2.7 million in maintenance programs, all to support the reliability of the system. Programs such as vegetation management, which includes tree trimming and removal of vegetation growth and distribution right away across one-fifth of our service territory. Additionally, 
every power pole and electrical cabinet is individually expected on a rotating 10-year schedule. The balance of the system is driven and inspected by Midland Power crews on an annual basis. These one, five, and 10-year inspection rotations help the co-op maintain a reliable system. Additionally, more than $10 million was invested in distribution plants in 2020. This includes our new to replace old program, which replaced 33 miles of power lines across the system, as well as upgrades to our substations in multiple areas. At Midland Power, we support caring for our environment while driving innovation and not compromising and giving our membership and its future generations the power to better their lives. That's why we support our affiliated generation cooperatives operation of balanced, reliable, and sustainable generation portfolios. Locally, we offer members the opportunity to participate in our community solar program, a 150 kilowatt solar farm, or you may take part in our green pricing program, which supports new construction of sustainable energy resources. Through our affiliate cooperatives, we have, we have supported projects, including the largest solar generating facility in Iowa, a 100 megawatt solar facility constructed in the Wise County in 2020, and a 150 kilowatt solar facility near Spencer, Iowa, which will compare the energy production and output of two differing solar style arrays. The project in Spencer was constructed by Iowa Choice Renewables, Midland Power, and eight other distribution cooperatives, solar contractor. If you're considering investing in your own solar facility, we encourage you to contact us here at Midland Power and learn how ICR might be able to assist you meeting your energy goals. Iowa's electric cooperatives have a long history of supporting energy and energy efficiency. In fact, we've been offering cost-effective energy efficiency programs since the 1980s. These programs include rebates and incentives for various energy efficient products. In 2020, Midland Power invested $230,000 in energy efficiency measures, which saved the equivalent of 122 average American homes energy use for the entire year. When it comes to using energy wisely, information is key. You, our members, can sign up for Smart Hub, our online account access and mobile app, and manage your account. View and pay your bill, monitor your usage 24-7 report service issues, and receive important notices, all in the palm of your hand or online. We currently have a price drawing promotion going on for Smart Hub users through the end of July. You can learn more at midlandpower.coop. We also work to keep all members informed about the co-op through several communication channels beyond Smart Hub, including our printed member newsletter, e-newsletter, social media channels, website content and updates, and billing inserts. Co-ops providing education, training, and information so the members can contribute effectively to the success of the co-op is one of the seven foundational principles of electric cooperatives. One of the latest topics of member information has been the fact that how members actually use their electricity is just as important as how much electricity they use. Recently, we've been sharing how high electric demands when a consumer runs numerous electric appliances at the same time, can be costly to the co-op and thus costly to the membership. Therefore, for informational and educational purposes only, an item called peak demand is now listed on the monthly power bills and available to view in Smart Hub, all to help member consumers understand better how they use electricity. In the past, You've been able to save money by turning off the light or taking advantage of one of our energy efficiency programs. In the future, you may actually be able to lower your power bill by coordinating the number of appliances you operate at once or staggering the use of major appliances throughout the day, reducing the demand at your location and potentially lowering your electric bill. A report on 2020 wouldn't be complete without mentioning the derecho that hit our area last August. On Monday, August 10th, a devastating derecho storm with winds nearing 140 miles per hour in some places carved a path of destruction through central and east central Iowa. Midland Power crews, along with support from Calhoun County REC, Iowa Lakes Electric Cooperative, Nishtabotan Valley REC, and Highline Construction, worked 16-hour days to restore power. 
On Monday after the storm, Midland had 5,466 members, which is about 40% of the membership without power. By 11 p.m. that night, our crews had restored power to nearly half those members. Each day brought progress, and by Monday the 17th, power had been stored across the system. On behalf of the entire Midland Power Team, we want to thank the membership for your patience, support, and for your messages of encouragement as our team worked to restore power after the devastating storm. While the bulk of my report is focused on 2020, I must mention the polar vortex that struck the entire midsection of the United States in February 2021 as it created yet another unique situation for many electric utilities and consumers across the country. Record low temperatures, which led to escalating demand for electricity, combined with disruptions to natural gas, coal, and renewable generation resources, resulted in unparalleled stress on the Midwest power grid. As a result of this pressure on the grid, on February 15th and 16th, utilities across the Midwest were called upon to curtail electric load. In my nearly 20 years in the electric cooperative industry, this was the first time I've experienced an order to curtail load because of tightening generation resources. Electric demand across the 14 state region, running from Canada to Northern Texas, reached historic highs during, due to high heating demand during record-breaking Arctic weather that lingered over this portion of the country. Consequently, it became necessary to implement low control measures and temporary power curtailments to reduce demand on the power grid. These highly unusual control measures were needed to prevent the potential for wide-scale system outages. When the Southwest Power Pool, or SPP, a regional transmission organization, which serves as sort of an air traffic controller for the electric grid, issued emergency alerts level two and level three, we were quick to share in social media that low shedding or blackouts may be a possibility. These orders are extremely rare in fact, they were the first level two and level three EEA orders in SPP's 80 year history. Ultimately, one of our power suppliers had to curtail electric load by powering down substations on February 15th and 16th, affecting approximately 14,000 rural electric consumers in our region, which included about 1,600 Midland Power consumers. I would like to thank our membership for your patience and understanding why we dealt with these challenges in real time. At Midland Power, we believe in promoting a proactive safety culture with the goal of sending each employee home safe at the end of every day. We know that a strong safety culture doesn't just happen on its own. It's a product of intentional training and proactive education. Arguably, as I go through this, the best report on 2020 I can give is that our team members live safety in 2020 working 99,762 hours without a single accident resulting in lost time from work. The entire team worked safely through the 16-hour days of the derecho storm recovery, as did our two linemen that traveled to Louisiana to assist with Hurricane Laura recovery. And despite the pandemic, we had zero incidents of COVID-19 transmission in the workplace while maintaining operations the entire year. At Midland Power, we do more than just provide electricity. We power lives and empower the communities we serve every single day. While 2020 certainly brought its share of challenges, we remain steadfast in our mission to safely provide affordable and responsible electric service while enhancing the communities we serve. And we'll never stop in pursuit of that mission. Thank you. Jack Brungi, President of Midland Power Rural Electric Cooperatives. You know, these annual meetings just seem to come around a lot quicker than they used to. So let's just get into the events of 2020. In December of 2019, it was exciting to see the beams being set for our new headquarters building in Boone, Iowa. Little did we know that that new facility would become an important part as we dealt with the COVID situation that seemed to hit Iowa. In March, it became apparent how serious this was gonna be. Management and staff immediately set about to develop 
policies and procedures that would protect our employees, our members, and ensure continuity of business as we move through COVID. As I said, the new facility allowed us to separate employees, uh, quote unquote, socially distance. It seems that was a term that we started talking about. Uh, our other outposts uh, provided the ability to keep employees separated. We went to staggered times for the employees to report. So every effort was made to keep our employees safe through all of this. Another thing, we learned a new term, derecho. On August 10th, our system was ravaged by the derecho that moved across the entire state of Iowa. And I wanna share some numbers with you, just what that did to our system and how we recovered from that. At 10 a.m. on August 10th, we reached a peak of 5,466 members without power. By 11 o'clock that night, they were down to 2,800 without power. On the 12th, we were down to 1,273. And on the 13th, we were made aware of another situation that was gonna affect restoration abilities. One of our transmission providers notified us that they were not gonna be able to immediately rebuild the transmission line. Our crews, along with independent contractors that had been working for us, went to work to build that line to serve our members in that area. Not only did we end up serving our members in that area, but for a time we served the town of Luther, a true testament to the cooperative ability. Um, I didn't mention the financials, uh, but a quick look at the balance sheet, you'll notice that Midland uh, had another exceptional financial year. But to me, the true successes in this year are our response to the COVID situation and our response to the durations. I'd like to end this discussion today on something that's very personal to me. 26 years ago, I was elected to serve the members of my district. And I wanna thank them for continuing to support me and send me back to represent them on the Midland board. When Gary Mount, president of Midland, decided to step down to accept the position as Midland's representative to SIPCO, uh, I was elected president, a uh, position that I've held until today. In April, I notified the executive committee that I would not be seeking re-election as president or not throwing my hat in the ring for that as the board makes the ultimate decision. In May, I told the rest of the board. In June, the board will reorganize shortly after the annual meeting and a new president will represent Midland. When I look at the people on the Midland board, I'm not worried about where Midland will go. Uh, we have new leadership ready to step up, ready to run with the ball, and I'm excited what the future can bring for Midland. Thank you. Chris, would you like to come back to uh, give us the election results? Ross makes it easy for me. <laughs> All right. The results of the director elections are in District 1, the winner is Randy Christensen. District 2, Jim Byrill. District 3, Joel Scow. And District 4, Tom Ingerbitson. So those are the successfully direct, uh, elected directors. And then for the nominating committee, for District 1, it's Richard Larson, Aaron McLeod, and Greg Reinhardt. For District 2, Greg Arts, Dennis Lynch, and Christopher Paulson. For District 3, Ron Collins, Anthony Hilbert, and Alan Main. And District 4, Dwayne Kruckenberg, Steve Martin, and Dwayne Schultz. Those results have been uh, certified by the tellers, and so those are your successful, successfully elected uh, directors and uh, nominating committee. Again, thank you, Chris, for you and your team. Uh, you know, it's it's a little bit more of a complicated process than what you see right here. So, uh, Chris, thanks for for taking over today and and doing an excellent job. Uh, 
At this time, I'll entertain uh, questions from the membership. Uh, Kara, do we have anything in our chat room? We don't. We don't. Okay. Are there any questions from those in attendance here today? You're all just ready to get to the prize drawing. <laughs> I got to tell you, this is the longest part of the meeting from the way this list looks. Yeah. So it's what, what we're what, what you're waiting for here today. Uh, only Midland members are eligible, and I always have to say directors and employees are not eligible. And you know, We've got a few retired directors here. I don't know, maybe maybe we ought to avoid them also. Uh, I guess not, we'll, we'll let them be in. So uh, the, first, uh, the first round of drawing will be for $50 bill credit on your electric bill. There will be three from each of the four districts. Most of you will, will recognize Colleen up here. Uh, Colleen used to really ride hard on me when we got to this for keeping these names right. So uh, I know it's going to be right today. No, I'll let you announce it. <laughs> All right, for District 1. We have Green Mountain Radio Research Company, New Cooperative from Fort Dodge, and Edward A. Smith III from Boone. District 2. District 2, we have Herstrom Farms, Inc. from Boone, Drew M. Sander from Ames, and Wilbur A. Nutter from Des Moines. Prizes will be from the Appreciation Supper. Uh, there will be uh, the following prize winners will be attendees of the recent member appreciation events, and we'll start with the grand prize drawing for the Cobalt self prepared propelled cordless electric lawnmower. Total 20, 24 winners in all. Yep, we got eight from 
fifty dollar gift yeah. card. Right, Seven yet? <laughs> Eight. You can draw the next day. <laughs> All right. David Doolittle from Story City. Dallas Ellingson from Alden. Art and Helen Wall from Alden. Fred Anderson from Madrid. Franklin White from Eldora. Mark Fair from West Bend. Deborah Robeson from Iowa Falls, one of our tellers. Floyd Bass from West Bend. All right. Eight fairway gift cards. Brenda's looking for the one with the gum on it. <laughs> okay. Steve Kaufman from Stanhope. David Larson from Rutland. Steven Stritzel from Ames. Rodney Scuffum from Algona. William Monin from Boone. Brett Sharon from Humboldt. Audra Pittman from Boone. Samuel Carlson from Boone. And the eight cases, $50 cases. Johnson from Perry, Glenn Gelhouse from Radcliffe, Lauren Jernagel from Radcliffe, Joel Songson from Ames, Barbara Murra from Ackley, Mary Bontrager from Boone, Struther Brothers from McCallsburg, Thomas Durr from Boone. Now the most important one of all are for the bicycle. We'll have one uh, from each of the three areas. We'll have three bicycles in total. One's from Humboldt. for helping with that. Uh, I'd like to take just a minute to thank everybody that in any way participated in this year's events. Those of you online, those that attended our member appreciation suppers. We had great attendance, uh, a lot of good fellowship. It was good to finally get out and, and be around people again. And, and like I say, the attendance uh, was, was excellent at all of the events. Are there any questions or business to come from the membership at this time? Kara, once again, anything on? Nope. Nothing online? Anything for those in attendance here today? 
Knowing no other business to come, come before this body, I declare this meeting adjourned. Thank you for your uh, attendance this afternoon. Uh, board members and management will be around if you have questions. And the board of directors will have an organizational meeting shortly after that. So thank you, everyone.